Thank you very much, Pranjul, for your time with us. Day two of the budget, and we've all had some occasion to go into the fine print. As as they say, the devil is always in the detail. I'm going to ask you to begin by telling us um, your own thoughts and observations about the direction of this budget. Yeah, great. Um, uh, thank you. Great to be here. So yes, indeed, you know, we've had like overnight to digest this budget. Uh, I think uh, the positive is the fact that there is a clear positive thrust on CapEx, capital expenditure. I think that's a good thing. It has come through. Uh, but unfortunately, it has come at a cost. I think the costs are twofold. Number one, social welfare spending has been lower than we had hoped for. And also the fact that now the government is borrowing a lot which means that there is stress in the bond market, which are pushing up some of the yields. Uh, so, you know, this is my overall take. Uh, when you put all of this together, the fact that fiscal deficit has been reduced and that generally is sort of anti-growth, but yet CapEx has been increased, which is generally pro-growth. If you combine the two, the net impact on growth, on GDP growth from this budget, in my view, is neutral. It's sort of a neutral budget. You know, some things are looking great, like higher capex, but some other things, for example, social welfare spend, are not looking that good. Okay, that's uh, that's a good uh, point. And I heard keywords like um, uh, you know uh, uh, anti-growth, but the real point that you make is neutral as far as uh, growth is concerned. Therefore, as a follow-up, does this budget support the recovery, or does it switch directions? Uh, towards being more conservative after two years of some extra spending to beat the pandemic impact on the economy? I do think that the finance ministry has a strategy at play. I think their strategy is, 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 is that, look, once you give Narega to somebody, you help out that person for that particular day's consumption, right? But when you give a job to somebody, it's permanent help. I think they have tried to move from temporary help to permanent help by doing capex and you know trying to get jobs at the back of capex that i think has been the general strategy it looks good to me but my only problem is that they could have continued for a little longer with you know little higher social welfare spending given the stress we have in the bottom of the pyramid you know we are seeing in rural india demand is slowing we are seeing you know what we call k shaped recovery if you track the narega numbers demand for Narega works is far outstripping the supply of Narega works. So that does show that there is demand for social welfare uh, schemes at this point. So the government could have continued being generous on that front for a little longer and then eventually gone off to the CapEx bandwagon. So that probably would be my number one browse uh, with the budget. Pranjul, why has this choice been made at this stage? Yeah, that's a great question. And then there's a macro backdrop to it. You know, the next two quarters, growth is going to be very strong, led by pent up services demand. You know, last year we saw pent up goods demand. By the end of last year, many of us were fully vaccinated. We are more confident to travel now. Once Omicron ends, you know, we will be traveling more. There'll be a lot of pent up services demand in the system. But the problem is anything that is pent up, you know, has an expiry date because it runs its course. And my worry is, you know, in the, by the middle of FY23, two quarters down the line, we'll realize that the pent-up services demand has gone and growth is slowing and we don't have an invest, a, a growth driver. What's going to lead growth from here? The budget in some sense is planning for that. It's planning for the second half of the year. It is trying to set the stage for CapEx because the hope is that by the time pent-up demand sort of comes off, by then a new investment cycle will rise and become the new driver for growth. I think that was the general uh, thesis of the budget. My only worry with this thesis is that uh, maybe the stage is not fully set for a capex rise. You know, I agree with you that public capex will increase. The government is trying to increase capital expenditure, but government only makes up 20% of investment. 75 to 80% is actually private sector driven. How is the situation for the private sector? And when you look at that, there are some positives. I think the number one positive is that the balance sheets of corporates are much healthier today than pre-pandemic. They have been able to shed a lot of debt at a time, you know, there was so much liquidity in the system. But unfortunately, just healthy balance sheet is not good enough to drive investment. What they are really waiting for 
is policy certainty, is macroeconomic certainty. There is just too much uncertainty in the system, wave after wave, commodity prices. So until that settles, I'm not sure private investment will come back in a hurry. Anju, uh, since you speak about this, I'm, I'm tempted to ask you, is the government getting any data uh, which, which is not perhaps publicly available that dictated this, this strategic choice, as you call it? Well, look, you know, um, uh, uh, I don't know how to answer that. As in, I must say that there are a couple of issues here. Uh, number one, we don't have very good data in the informal sector. You know, even our GDP numbers, they sort of don't really capture what's going on in the informal sector. They just assume that the informal sector is in line with the formal sector. But sometimes that's not true. When you have a huge shock like the pandemic, informal can do worse than the formal. So one thing is that, look, if you go by our official data, then we don't get very good real time indicators on the informal sector. But what do what we do get for the informal sector is many other surveys as in a lot of surveys have come over time. Uh, and you know, we're getting more and more surveys every day. And each of them is pointing to the fact that there is distress. Uh, and there is a lot of problems at the bottom of the pyramid.